If you have ever had thoughts that just bombard you constantly, fearful, negative, and you just don't know how to make them stop, we've got some good news for you today because my guest says it is possible to be completely free. Please welcome Pastor Eddie Turner. Thank you, Donna. <laughs> how are you? I'm honored to be here. Thank you so very much. Absolutely. We are talking about what you call chaos in our minds, chaos in our minds. Now, now explain that a little bit to us. You're not talking about just a fleeting thought that just comes and goes. No, it, we are living in a day in which people are being bombarded, uh, consumed, overrun with negative, accusatory, tormenting, uh, unhealthy thoughts to the point that our mental health professionals are uh, working at an over uh, time pace. Uh, our hospitals are being overrun with mental health situations. Emotionally, people are very upset and mm -hmm. are, are tense. Mm -hmm. Stress is at an all time high. So I'm not talking about a, a just an occasional thought, but things that like a tsunami yes. that overrun yes. you. Something that is like, I think you have described it as crippling or paralyzing. It torments you to the point of paralyzing that you can't function properly in life. It changes the way you live. It changes the way you think and interact with others. It's a, a terrible place to live. You can't sleep at night. And uh, you just become bound by uh, oppressive, tormenting thoughts. Now, I know this actually hit home mm -hmm. for you, Eddie. What happened? My family has a history of uh, mental challenges and mental illness and emotional problems. And uh, I, I stayed away from it. I grew up, I did, I saw it from a distance, but then it uh, caught up with me in my late twenties. And I found myself uh, with just one thought that I couldn't get rid of. I would cast it aside, one terrible, accusatory, stupid, silly thought. And did it just like come out of nowhere? Driving down the highway one day at a good season in my wife and I's life, and just out of nowhere, this crazy, accusatory thought hit me. And for some reason, it stung me. And I got rid of it real quickly. I got my mind on something else. But then a week later, it came back. A couple of weeks later, it came back. And before well, now, long, was it this, had me. Was this distinct? Was it a very distinct thought that came into your mind? Yeah, it was, it was, it was just out of the clear blue, this thought hit me. You are demon possessed. Ooh. And I'm a pastor. And I thought, how silly, what, where, did, where in the world did that come from? And I know a lot of our people watching today, they're thinking, they've had those moments, where did that come from? And usually I was able to kick it out, get rid of it, mm -hmm. change my mind, think about something else. But that thought, for some reason, grabbed me. I was able to eradicate it for a little while, but it was persistent. It kept coming back and coming back. So what was the next couple of months like for you? Well, they grew increasingly intense mm. and tormenting. That one thought turned into an avalanche of more condemning and accusatory thoughts. God doesn't love you. Mm. You're demon possessed. Mm -hmm. This is the reason your church isn't growing. This mm -hmm. is the reason people aren't coming. You never were called to ministry. In fact, yeah. your family had this. It's on you now. It's going to be on your children. You're going to deal with this the rest of your life. In fact, why don't you just end your life, wow. give up life. Wow. So it, it, it started just small, but then it started building. Yes, yes. And I guess at that time you just didn't know what to do with it. You, you told me, Eddie, that one day it got so bad that you and your wife were out and you said, take me home, take me home. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. You ran into your house, into your den, hit the floor face first, and was crying out, crying out. Mm -hmm. What happened next? Well, the Lord Jesus walked into the room and in total desperation, I hadn't been out of my house in several days. My wife tried to encourage me to get out and go eat breakfast with her and our little toddler. And uh, I did, but during the breakfast, the panic, the anxiety, mm -hmm. the nervousness mm -hmm. came on me and I ran out of the restaurant she finally took me home and in total desperation, I cried out to the Lord, I'm losing my mind. Mm -hmm. I am, what happened to my grandparents is happening to me. 
I'm going to end up in a mental asylum. They're going to take me away. Oh, Lord Jesus, you've got to come. And he showed up. He walked into my room. I didn't, I didn't ask for a vision. I was speaking, crying out of desperation. Just, oh, God, help me. The last thing I expected was he to show up. So you've got your face in the carpet, mm. crying out, and you feel that someone else is there with you, and you raise your head. What happened? I'm in the house by myself. I'm crying and just weeping, desperate, hopeless. Felt like my life was over. And in total desperation, oh, Lord Jesus, please come and help me. And I was silent for a few seconds, and I sensed a presence. I thought my neighbor had come in. I looked up, and I saw some feet and sandals. Oh. And I thought, somebody's in my house. <laughs> I left the front door open, and I got up on my hands and knees, and I looked up, and it was the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, Eddie, what would you have me do for you? You know, I've thought a thousand times since that and thought, man, I, I wish he'd asked me that again, show up again, and he never has. <laughs> You'd but, be prepared. Yeah, I, I, I've got a list now. But you know, when you're in the middle of a war, mm -hmm. all you think about is the attacks coming against you. And I looked at him and I said, Lord Jesus, these thoughts, they're killing me. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, Eddie, I told you weeks ago, thoughts were as vapors. And I remember praying several weeks ago, Lord, why did this, is this happening to me? I've been a good man. I love you. Why is these attacks, thought attacks coming at me? And I remember praying that one day and I heard in my spirit, but I was young. I didn't know what to hear and what to listen to. I heard this word, vapors, vapors. So I thought, that's crazy. It don't mean anything. And I kicked it out. But the Lord told me that day, I've told you. Thoughts are as vapors, they have no power. Oh, I bet you remembered that when, <laughs> when he said that. Let me stop you right there, and we're going to dig a little deeper into what the Lord Jesus said and did when he appeared to Eddie in his den that day when we come back. Welcome back, everyone, to Something More. I'm here with Pastor Eddie Turner, and we were just hearing about a vision where he was crying out to the Lord Jesus to get rid of this torment that was in his mind. All these thoughts, he cried out to him, and then he actually visited him. Now, Eddie, when, when Jesus appeared to you and he said, oh, man, just even thinking about this, what would you have me do for you, Eddie? And you said, Lord, these thoughts are killing me. What mm. happened next? He reached down to the side of my head. Mm. And it's like yesterday, Donna. He reached down to the side of my head. Sometimes when I think about it, I can almost still feel the pressure of his hand against the side of my head. Oh. And he pulls out what looks to be a banner. I, the best way I can explain it, it was like a banner going across the street announcing a fair or a big event in right, the city. Right, right. He pulls out of this banner, and as he pulls it out, I looked and he started seeing what was written on it. It said, you are demon-possessed. Because that's the thought that Satan had locked into my mind that I couldn't get rid of. And the Lord pulled that out. Yeah and he blew it, and it disappeared like just a cloud that disappeared when wind hits it. Like a vapor, That's like exactly you said, right. the word that you it got. It was a vapor. Yeah. Yeah. And then he reached down again, and he pulled another banner out of the side of my head, and this one says, God does not love you. Because Satan had put that, the reason you're demon-possessed is God doesn't love you. He's never loved you. And he pulled that out, and he blew it, and it disappeared. And then he looked to the corner of the room and he said, Eddie, there's your problem. And as soon as I looked to where he was pointing, I looked to the corner yeah. and there were two monkey looking creatures. And it, then I thought, man, I've died. I've gone to heaven. I've, I'm having hallucinations. What's going on here? 
Uh, and I saw these two monkey looking creatures and in the realm of the spirit, what I've learned is when you get in the spirit, you know things you normally did not know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know a lot about demons. I'd never read much other mm -hmm. than a few verses in the Bible. But that day I knew they were two demons and the Lord Jesus said to me, there's your problem. Now what was their demeanor, what were they doing? What was their reaction to what was going on? Now, I had been living for several months in total fear to the point that I wouldn't even leave my house, mm -hmm. couldn't sleep at night, headaches constantly, constant panic. I lived in fear, but for those few moments where the Lord Jesus was with me, fear evaporated. I sense no fear, but for some reason, those two demons were shaking in fear. Each time he would look at them, I could see the hair on their bodies shaking, shaking in fear. They wouldn't look at me and they definitely didn't look at him. So even though I was at peace and there was peace in the room that I had not experienced in months, the devils were scared because they were in the presence of Jesus. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I bet you think about that plenty of times over the anytime years. Anytime fear tries to get on me today, I remind myself, intentionally remind myself mm -hmm. of what fear does when it gets in the presence of Jesus. Yes, yes. Well, you mentioned peace, having peace after that experience, and I know you experienced peace for a while there, but then you, you started having those struggles again, having them a little at a time until a couple of months later, you were still fighting this and you're sitting in your office and you'd had enough, Eddie. Yeah, I was sitting in my office on a Wednesday. Life had gotten back quite normal. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, people said, well, after the Lord appeared to you, wasn't you free from tormenting thoughts? And the truth is, no, I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things the Lord said to me is, Eddie, there's your problem. So I had to do something about it. Ah. It's not that his visitation to me took care of my problem. I had to put the Word of God to work and do something about it. I was sitting in my office and the thoughts had come back with a, an intensity and I was back them and I was studying for a message, upcoming a message a sermon I was going to preach, but my mind was racing, thoughts were coming, but my spirit was trying to concentrate on the things of the Lord. And finally I heard this, sitting at my desk, I heard these words, just give up, you're a victim, oh. you're a victim. Oh. See, you're a victim. This, it happened to your grandmother, it happened to your dad, it's happened to you, they were good people. They've gone to heaven. You can go to heaven. Don't fight this anymore. You're a victim. And for a moment, Donna, I had peace. I mm. had peace because all of a sudden wow. the responsibility to fight this thing was off of me. I don't need to fight. I, I'm a victim of this thing. I'm just a victim. And suddenly the Spirit of God on the inside of me rose up and said, that wasn't me speaking to you. That came from outside. Yeah. And immediately I realized this is the enemy changing his tactic. He was coming after me. Now he's trying to make me feel like a victim that I'll stop warring against him. And I said, I will not receive that. I am not a victim. I am more than a conqueror through Amen. Christ Jesus. Amen. And when that happened, something amazing happened. I lifted up out of my seat. I don't know if I was in my body or out of my body. I lifted up. I remember going, oh, 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 oh. And the next thing I knew, I was standing in front of Jesus in heaven. Mm. And the colors, Donna, we have no colors to compare. The peace, the love, the atmosphere was love. You know, people up there don't live on oxygen. They live on love love in its purest, mm -hmm. most godly form. And the Lord Jesus took me, grabbed me, and He hugged me. When He hugged me, love went through my being. I go, oh, I remember <laughs> saying, oh, oh. And then He started to pull away. And I knew um, immediately, this is temporary. Mm. I haven't died, I'm in heaven. But He started to pull away and I said, Lord Jesus, I don't wanna go. He said, you must go. I said, I don't want to go back. He said, you must go back for your wife and your little boy. I said, but I don't want to. And he said, and you must go back for them. Yeah. And he pointed yeah. over yeah. to the corner and I saw a warehouse 
open space, and it was hundreds and thousands of army cots. Army cots, empty army cots. What did, what did that mean? At that time, I didn't know what it meant. Mm -hmm. I found out later when I mm -hmm. came back, but at that time, I didn't know what it meant. He said, you must go back for them. Wow. And I started pulling back and pulling back and pulling back, and he finally got so far removed, I was back in my desk, and he was gone. Wow. <laughs> well, we're going to stop right here. Don't go away. I'm sure you want to hear the rest of this story. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to Something More. I'm here with Pastor Eddie Turner. And Eddie, when we went to break, you were talking about being in heaven and the Lord Jesus having you look to one side and seeing a multitude of what you, you thought looked like army cots. What, what have you learned that that meant? Immediately when that vision was over, uh, people started coming really out of the woodwork wanting help, telling me about their emotional struggles, their mental challenges, pastors. And over the next 30 years, my wife and I have spent our ministry helping people, children, teenagers, adults, senior saints uh, that are struggling in their mind, tormented in their mind. And those army cots represented the broken, the wounded, the people who've been sidelined because they can't get their mind to right. shut off. So he needed you to come back for them. Just telling my story wow. and telling what he did for me. Mm -hmm. And teaching, I know in your book, Conquering the chaos, the chaos in, in your mind. You have a lot of teaching that that, that Jesus Himself taught you. Mm -hmm. uh, strategies, right. points, keys that people can use to help them through these times. Let's talk just for a moment about strongholds. Okay. I hear that a lot. What is a stronghold, and how does it become a stronghold? Well, over the last two decades, we've heard a lot of, in the church world about the term strongholds, and it's usually referring to heavenly beings over cities and things of that yep. nature, and that's true, but the major strongholds we have to deal with in day-to-day -day life is those strongholds in our mind. Mm. It's Satan's goal, it is his aim to create a stronghold in our emotions, in our minds, because the word strongholds in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 literally means a fortress. Mm. It's a fort. It's something to imprison you oh. and to hold you in bondage, and Satan his goal is to get strongholds, strongholds of fear, strongholds of lust, strongholds of jealousy or envy or insecurity, stronghold, every type of stronghold that you can imagine, anything right. that keeps us right. from being what God wants us to be. That's his goal, to get it locked in on our mind. And just quickly, how does a stronghold become a stronghold? That's a great question, Donna. A lot of Christians have mistakenly believed that Satan just put an addiction on you when he wants to. He can't do that. Or put a fear on you. Or paranoia upon you. He can't do it at will. He doesn't have that much power. He's a defeated being. Mm -hmm. The way he does it, he begins with a thought. Just a simple thought. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5 tells us to take every thought captive. Yes. And the reason yes. why is because mm. if we don't, it will then turn in to an imagination. Right. And imagination is the picture of the thought, a scene, an image. You know, it goes right. from a thought, then it moves to an imagination. And if we don't hurl it, the Bible says in the King James, cast it down, yes. the imagination, then it will take the next progression. It will become a stronghold. It will become something that locks in mm -hmm. and you've got to act on it. You're driven by it. It controls your yeah. life. Yeah. But it's a process. Yeah. Well, in these last couple of minutes, what I would like to do, Eddie, is we've been talking about the power of a thought, mm -hmm. a single thought and the power and, and the destructive power. But I want to talk about the, the, the positive power of a single thought and how you became free from a word, one word that set you on the path to freedom. 
Tell us about that. Well, people ask me all the time, how did you get free? How did you finally get free? Um, I was praying one day and uh, Philippians chapter four, verse six through eight. And I said, Lord Jesus, your word's not working. I said, you said through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto yes. God and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind. I said, the guard's leaving. As long as I'm praying, he shows up. Mm -hmm. But when I stop praying, he leaves. I can't pray all the time. I can't right, pray 24 right, hours a day. Right. And the Lord said to me, read the next verse. I read the next verse and when I did, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, lovely, pure. When I read that verse, finally, the word finally came up off the page and went 3D and the Spirit of God said, once you pray, you have one final thing to do. You've got to think right what's true, wow. lovely, pure, and of good report. Think on these things. And many of our listeners and, and viewers today, what they are doing, they are praying good. Mm -hmm. They're good prayers. And when they pray, the Spirit of God comes upon you when you pray and you sense a peace. But a day later, the worry comes back. A week later, the fear comes back. Or maybe that afternoon when you're getting ready for bed, that torment tries to come back. After we pray, we have one final thing to do. We've got to think right. Yes, yes. Wow, that seems so simple. So simple, but we've missed it for years yes. because it's so subtle. It's the power of our thought life. If we don't take our thoughts captive, our thoughts will take us captive. The wow. power of a single thought. Wow, wow. Will you take this last minute and pray for those that are watching? I sure will. In Jesus' name, for those of you who are watching me today who are tormented in your minds, you're harassed. You're at the point of giving up. You're starting to lose control of your faculties. You're starting to be unable to concentrate. I pray for you right now. The power of the Holy Spirit will touch you right where you are and bring a respite to your mind. A spirit of peace will come upon you and the Word of God that you've stored in your heart will rise up in you and become your weapon and your shield of faith. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Eddie, thanks so much for being with us. If you, if you had one final thought to leave with people, what is something that, that you, you say all the time to encourage people? Thoughts may come and thoughts may persist, but thoughts never spoken in word or deed will die unborn. Wow. Thank you so much for being with us on Something More. We'll see you next time. Call now and get Pastor Eddie Turner's brand new anointed book and his exclusive three-part audio CD teaching series, Conquering the Chaos in Your Mind. It's exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9727. Pastor Eddie Turner shares how you can be set free in his brand new anointed book and his exclusive three-part audio teaching series. Eddie Turner wants to help you or someone you know find freedom from tormenting and anxiety anxious thoughts, harassing thoughts that just won't leave you alone. Eddie Turner had a powerful vision in which Jesus appeared to him and taught him how to control oppressive thoughts and walk in the power and authority of the Holy Spirit. Through this book and three-part audio CD teaching series, you will understand how to live moment by moment in the perfect will of Jesus and master your thought life. Discover the anatomy of a mental stronghold. Learn how your thoughts dictate your destiny. Begin to practice on taking your negative thoughts captive and obtain the mind of Jesus. Receive powerful scriptures for calming the chaos, anxiety, attacks of the enemy in the battleground of your mind. Don't you ever be bullied by thoughts again. God has promised you a mind at peace, fearless and free. Eddie Turner has included on his three-part audio CD teaching series, powerful and effective prayers, prayers that come against the spirit of fear and torment, prayers for God's peace and for God's authority over the enemy to free you, prayers for you to take every thought captive for the kingdom, prayers for healing from trauma and mental pain, prayers for God's peace to fill your body, soul and mind. You have a choice. You can take your thoughts captive or your thoughts will take you captive. You don't have to be bullied 
by oppressive thoughts. You can be free today. Don't miss out on getting Pastor Eddie Turner's brand new anointed book and his exclusive three-part audio CD teaching series, Conquering the Chaos in Your Mind. It's exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9727. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9727 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.